going to teach you exactly how you can make and sell your first 2k automation for e-commerce. In this video, we will not only be going into the back end of the system, but also the exact selling script that I would use to upsell this to my clients right now. But before we get into this, understand that this system does not just send messages automatically from your Shopify store, but also has delays for each specific customer product. Now, if you're an e-commerce owner or you're any type of business owner that requires automations like this, just simply contact us right here. And me and my team will come out specifically to build you out a personalized version of this for your business. Anyway, let's get right into the WhatsApp automation for e-commerce owners. Now, there are thousands of automation softwares out there, popular ones being like make.com and zapier but in today's video we're not going to be using any of that we're going to use a software that i'm not sure many of you have heard about pably connect now why do i recommend pably connect to an automation of this type well simply in three points there's a free trial available it's easy to use and there are a lot of integrations including whatsapp api which is what we're going to be using to send out our messages now most of my viewer base are beginners so i'm going to give you guys a little category on the price of pably connect. there are two different types of prices monthly and yearly but i'm here to tell you that pably connect is so cheap where zapier asks for maybe 70 dollars for a month per 5,000 tasks or something pably connect only charges about 20 dollars for 12,000 tokens which is the amount of tasks the amount of operations you can do. Anyway, enough talking. Let's get into why you actually clicked on this video. So here is the back end of the automation. Before we can start, there's a few things that you guys have to understand. First of all, on Pabby Connect, each task is represented by a node. A node can open up to have more actions inside. Each node is represented by two features, either a trigger step, which starts the automation, or an action step, which is the result of a trigger. As you can see here, trigger step, when this happens, action step do this now that we've gotten that out of the way let's actually dive into this automation first step of actually building this automation is you guys have to connect your shopify to the trigger step we need to make it so whenever a new order is placed we can get the information and launch our automation what i've done here is i've chosen the app shopify as my trigger step and i've chosen a trigger event of a new order basically what that means is from the shopify app each time a new order is placed the trigger event i will be able to start the automation so I'm sorry if it gets a little complicated, but just trust me, it's simple when you understand it. Each time a new order is placed from our action event, from our app, the Shopify, from our trigger event, we will get a webhook response. As you can see here, a webhook response is received and that's where you have all the information about the order. What exactly is a webhook response? Well, the webhook response is the data that we have collected from our Shopify. So it's basically the customer data. This is all of the data from what product they're buying, how much it costs, so their order number, all of that. But the question now comes is how do we actually connect this exact trigger step to our Shopify. So this is one of the reasons why I love Public Connect so much. They make it so simple. You simply have to connect this webhook URL. You simply have to copy and paste this URL into your Shopify. As you can see down here, there are a few steps as to how to do this. I'm not going to dive into that. It's pretty straightforward. After you've connected it into your notification center, you simply just click save and send a test request and it will send a test request. One thing that's really important is you guys have to make sure that your simple response is off. This will make more sense later. Anyway, let's get into the next step. After you've connected your Shopify, the problem that occurs is that the data we've actually got in the webhook response comes back in JSON format. The next step that we have to do is transform that data. So our starting off transformer is our data transformer. This will convert our JSON format our JSON that we collect, the information that we collect from our Shopify to text format so that our system can actually read it. We do this so that our system can not only read the data from JSON, but also separate the different attributes into different factors. So this step is actually essential for our system to read data. But this step does not matter if you only have a one product Shopify store. This is only for multiple products because the system actually reads data when multiple product comes in JSON form. So that's why we do it. To make this step apparent for each specific customer, you have to map the data. You have to map the data that you've collected from the webhook response into this line items array. Pabby Connect actually makes this very easy by just simply going to new order Shopify and typing line items. And as you can see right here, we have the line items. That's basically how you map your data. Then you simply have to click save and send a test request and then you get all the data converted into different line items. 
after that, we've collected the data into readable format, but we still have to separate all of them into different attributes. We do that through our formatters. We simply just do the separate quantity, separate price, separate product, and then we're done. Now, how you actually do that is just by copying this. You map the data from the previous step. You find the comma and you replace it with a slash n. This will allow the data to slash one to place in different lines. Now you do that with all of these other separate price and separate product. And after that, you actually have to format the phone number based on the country that you're in. That's a pretty simple step. You guys can just do that on your own. Anyway, after that, this is where it actually gets fun. We have the router step. Now, when you have multiple products, this is how you send specific messages for each product. So as you can see here, I've labeled it as product one, product two, product three. Each route is a different product and each route is a whole new page where you can do multiple automation. So as you can see here, I have dived into the map of product one. In this, I can build an entirely new automation just for product one. Each product by its name should be filtered so that your system can actually know that this product goes in this lane. Product one matches with product one's map. You simply do that by mapping the data and seeing if it contains the value that you're looking for, which is in this case, product one. So let's say you were selling protein powder and this one was flavored chocolate, right? You would have to filter the automation to send chocolate flavored protein powder to this route. And this goes on and on with the other strawberry flavored, blueberry, whatever. So anyway, after that, what if you had different sizes for your product? What could you do then? Well, you would have to add another router step. In this step, you would label the different variants. Over here, I know it's in milliliters, but let's just go with it. Let's say this specific product, the chocolate a protein powder had two sizes, 950 ml and 250 ml, right? You would have to send specific messages for each specific product. Like if this one ran out after 30 days, you'd have to send a message after 30 days. If this one 10 days, you'd have to send it after 10 days. And you see where I'm getting at? This step is not essential if, again, you only have one variant product. It's just if you have multiple variants. But just for the sake of this video, let's just say that you had multiple variants. Now, this router step works exactly like the other one. Each specific route has an entirely new map or entirely new automation inside it. We follow the same principles by first filtering the value as doing contains 950 ml, the size. But anyway, inside this specific map is when you actually can add the time delay and actually send the messages. This is the last step of the automation, doing this route step. That's when you can actually add your time delay, send this templated message. So let's dive into that. So the first step to actually being able to send the messages is adding the time delay. This is where you can actually send specific delays for the product variant or just product if you want. Anyway, after that, you have to add your data to a Google Sheet. So remember the data that you filtered at the very beginning? You have to now map that data from those nodes into separate columns of your Google Sheet. The reason you do this is so that your system can read it in one light. So that your system can have all the information to send out. The way you formatted the price, quantity, and all of that, that's where you'll actually map the data into this. Now remember, this feature is an add-on if you have multiple products or multiple variants. If you don't, just simply map the data onto your Google Sheet. But after that, we actually have to get the data from our Google Sheet. So let's say that someone bought an order. It would be added, all of their information would be added on the first row of a Google Sheet. Then our system will have to actually collect that data so that we can send out our templated message. You just highlight the area and then you get the rows. And then you just simply feed it onto your WhatsApp Cloud API. Now in this video, I won't be going over how to actually set up your Cloud API, but trust me, there are hundreds of videos on that topic, so don't worry. I'll leave a link in the description and just go through that video. It's quick and easy. You guys will get it. So after you've connected it to your Cloud API and you've built out your templated messages and you can now send messages, you have to now delete the row. Now, I know this sounds weird, but this step is essential so that the system can be automated. Otherwise, when your system goes to collect the data, it will just collect the first row data. Pavi Connect cannot read the second line of data when it's entered. It will just continuously repeat the first data set. So you have to actually delete the row after you've sent out your message. In this little section, I've actually dived into it really well. But now the question comes, how do you actually sell this? So let's go to the future me in which he will tell you how to actually sell this to your clients. So now that you've seen the systems back end and how it actually works, the question on your mind is, why would any e-commerce or business owner actually need this? My simple answer to you is, it depends. It depends. It depends on their sales process. It depends on if they gather the information available to send out retargeting like this. Just imagine this. Your client has 20K customers per month and is selling protein powder for $25. 
He knows that after roughly 30 scoops or 30 days, their customer will run out of that product. If you could build a system that automatically sends a message to all 20k customers on either SMS or WhatsApp, that would bring in roughly 20k times 25, which is 500,000. And even if only 1% bought this, that would bring 5k per month. Now you see how enticing this can get for business owners when automatically they can just make 5k a month with the clients that they already have. Now let me give you guys a visual imagery on exactly why your clients would want a system like this. So here's the exact script that you would have to ask your clients to identify it, to actually show them, to upsell the system to them. So let's get into it. So question number one that you would ask them is, on average, how much does a customer pay per order? Now the reason you're asking this is, and the reason I've written value X next to it is because you have to calculate exactly how much money, how much revenue you're bringing into them. That's the only way you can show a client or a business owner that if you do this for them, if you invest this much amount, I can bring you in this much amount by making them do the calculations for you using their own information. So that's the first question. On average, how much does a customer pay per order? We're going to write that as value X. You guys want to understand this right now, but I'll show it to you in the next slide. Now, question number two that you'd ask is how many buying customers do you get per month? Which we're going to write this as value Y. So this is the amount of customers that actually buy stuff per month. The first one is how much the order value is. Second one is how much they get per month. Value X, value Y. Question number three, out of the Y customers, the buying customers per month that you get, what percentage do you think would come back if you sent them each a personalized message after certain period of time? The reason you're asking this question and the reason it's valued as value you is because you're asking them to give you the information so you can do the calculations for them. You're asking them to actually give you so you can rearrange it in an order. What you get out of this is the order value, value X, the customers per month, the buying customers per month, value Y, and the percentage out of those customers that would buy, value you. So this is where you guys will actually seem to understand what exactly I'm trying to get at. Broken beliefs, how they will realize. So this is you talking right now. You would say to your client, so you're saying if value U percentage would come back out of value Y customers per month and each order value is value X, the amount of money people would pay per order. Then if we sent out value Y, the customer per month messages to all of your customers, you would make and then you would do the calculations. You would use their information to do the calculations so that you could identify the total revenue made. And then you'd word it to them in this specific way. If you can invest 2k USD, I will make you total revenue made per month. This is very essential to word it in this way because if you just go up to them saying that if you pay me 5k, I'll, I'll make you this much, they won't agree, okay? I'm telling you right here, I speak from experience, they will just laugh at you. They'll say, how do you do that, blah, 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 blah. So I understand this is still confusing for a lot of you. So let's put in actual values. So you would say to them, so you're saying if after you ask the questions and you've identified this, this is what you'd say. So you're saying if 5% would come back out of 45,000 buying customers per month and each order value is at $15, then if we sent out 45,000 messages per month to all your customers, you would make, then you do the calculations. It would be the percentage, the amount of customers that they said would come back times the customers. So 5% of 45,000, which is the customers, then you get the total amount of customers that would come back. But you have to do that with the order value so you could identify the amount of money they would make, the amount of revenue that they would get. 2,250 times 15, which is the order value, and this right here is the customers, obviously. So if you times that, you'll get the dollars, the total revenue made. 33,750. You see how this sounds? You could go up to them and say, if you invest 5K, I will make you 33,750 per month. I'll make you 34,000 per month if you can invest 5,000 on 1%. He's over here thinking that, wow, this system can automatically make me 34,000 per month if I invest 5,000 every single month. This is a great deal. Let me take this. But the reason I said 5K instead of 2K is because personally, 2K is what I would charge based on the amount of messages they want to send. I don't know why I wrote sell here. I'm kind of crazy, but send. Now you guys are probably asking is the rest 3K, where is that coming from? Why would you want to charge that? Well, it is dependent on the cost of retargeting messages for Meta WhatsApp. What you guys have to know about this system is if you want to send out WhatsApp messages, 
WhatsApp themselves have their own charge. They have their own charge for marketing messages, which is what this type of message is. How do you actually calculate the cost? Well, let me tell you guys. You would simply put the buying customers per month, 45,000 as a previous example stated, times the meta charges for your location. Each location has different meta charges, but on average, the average cost per location for a marketing message is $0.06 per message. So just keep that in mind while you're doing your cost effective and you're calculating your cost. So now let's get back onto the desktop version of me. Uh, there is my exact step-by-step -step automation guide as to how you can make and sell your first automation. Now remember, this automation isn't just for e-commerce owners. You can use this for absolutely any niche of yours. So anyway, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and make sure you stay hard.